That day was just a normal day. It was a, well, it was a good day, to be honest. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, it was gorgeous. James had asked me to pick him up to take him to a football match at 10 o'clock in the morning. This was his first senior match and he was quite excited by it. As you do, he left the car, I gave him a kiss, told him he loved him. Expecting to see him again later on that evening when he was hungry. We came home um, and then I remember him saying, right dad, I'm, I'm going out. I said, well, behave, you know what I mean? And um, he said, yeah, I'll, I'll see you later, Dad. Um, at that point, I didn't realise just how much later he meant. We noticed it was a hot day, so we thought we'll go and do something. So we all decided to go to the res, chill out, have some fun. We decided to walk around where the jetties were and sit on them. We let ourselves off and then it just floated to the middle. Everyone were like, right, what are we going to do? Raf weren't moving with us paddling it. In the end, I decided that we had to swim. Keaton lowered himself into water and set up swimming. But James, being who he were, dived in. And then that's when it happened. As soon as you'd jumped in, you took your breath away. And it's like, it, at that point, that's when I thought I shouldn't really do it, but I just thought it's not that far, so I just started swimming. Before they jumped in, it didn't look far at all, but then as soon as they were in the water and swimming away, it was just too far. When I got so far and I realised that I'm not going to make it, everyone started shouting, come back. So I turned around, tried to start going back. When I was younger, and even now, uh, hearing the people drowning, I'd think it, you, it's not possible, you could just swim, but the water, it's, it just disables your body. When you stopped moving your arms, I just went under. So that's when, and then the more you used, tried to keep yourself up, the more energy you lost. But at, at that point, we'd, he was still swimming. He was, he was still going strong. When we'd walked to take the dogs, I remember hearing sirens just never ending. We didn't notice anything untoward. We just saw a, a boats on the lake. We then heard a, a helicopter. When you see the air ambulance going somewhere, um, I think you know, you, you know it's something serious for that to come out. As you do, we were staring, watching the commotion, watching what was going on, but we were a long distance away. Um, my partner turned around and said, I think someone might have drowned. As we were moving away, we saw two of James's friends who were coming running down the path and they were asking where another boy was. And I said, oh, I don't know, but have you seen James? And they said, well, yeah, he's with Keaton. I said, well, where? And they said, on the res. When I turned round, <clears throat> you couldn't see where anybody, anybody were. Your vision started going. You couldn't hear anything just apart from the water splashing. I just led there, just looking up, trying to get out. And I just felt the raft touch me. So I just grabbed the raft and everyone dragged me on. He, he had no colour in him, his lips were blue. Like, he was like lifeless, like he didn't have no energy to even talk to us. Next thing we know, we're like looking for James and then we see him and he's shouting for help. My first priority was to gain some information from the people who were there. Uh, two of the people I first spoke to gave me a rough uh, idea of, of James's last known location moved from a somewhat hasty search of, of the immediate vicinity that, that James was last seen in to a more systematic search of the whole lake. I know Mel kept saying to me, I want to be doing something. Uh, you know, we all want to be doing something, but there's nothing you can do. You've got to let the professionals do their bit. We were awake all night waiting for news. Um, and then the following morning, we saw two police officers walking up the path and we kind of knew. We hoped for the best, we hoped that he'd been injured and he was on the shore and he, he, we just hoped for the best and that didn't happen. I mean, I've, I've been a police officer 16 years and seeing it from the other side is, I can't put it into words, to see, you know, Mel and Pete just broken. Uh, it's hard then to sometimes think of how, as a police officer, I'm going to, you know, have to deal with something like that, you know, in the future. Like obviously, we all felt guilt for maybe not getting him, but from the time he was shouting out and the time it would have took us to get there, all of us would have been in the same position as well. 
He was such a strong swimmer, such an athletic person. To see him as he was in the mortuary, just, well, my world fell apart. I've never understood like the dangers of water, and but now it's unbelievable what it can do. Because it looks so harmless, but it's very deadly.